In this class, we will see how to present our results. First, access the toolbar where we choose the different types of results. We must click on the Solution folder. So we will enter the toolbar called Solution, where we find various types of data that we can plot. We found data from deformation, strain, which can be translated as unitary deformation, stress, which would be effort or tensions, energy damages, and other tools. First, let's see how we plot the deformation. At this moment, we have two options, total deformation and directional. The other options are not enabled at the moment because there are no charges or analyzes that plot this type of result. Therefore, they are not available. But if we plot the total deformation, we can select between a type of total deformation or directional by clicking on solve and choosing the axis, but leave it at total. By clicking on solve and of the particles, in this case, the deformation shows a square root of the sum of the squares of each of the movement components, be it an x, y, or z. In addition to that, we can find, by touching some source of plotted deformation, the toolbar of results. In this toolbar, we can change the scale to the real deformation scale, or much more increased. We can also choose to have isosurfaces, that is, surfaces where the tension is changing. We can even change the way the stripes are plotted. At this moment, we have chosen contours by bands, that is, curves that represent bands of equal tension. However, when we choose smooth contours or smooth bands, it will make a gradient of each of the colors as it passes through one band and another. We also have the option to choose isolineas. These are lines that represent the change between each of the bands. But we leave it configured as contour bands. Another option we have is to graph the deformations by vectors. When activating this option, instead of showing colors on the solid, it shows arrows that indicate its movement. And we can also see the vector display toolbar or the vector graph, in which we can increase or decrease the representative size as well as increase the population of vectors or decrease it. Finally, we can transform the line shape of vectors into a volumetric form. As we approach, we see that it is a volume of the arrow and not just a line. Another option we have in the results is to choose to show a label where the maximum value is produced for the results we're plotting. For example, the maximum displacement value is found in this corner, where a load has been applied. You can also display the minimum, which is in coordinates with what we've established in our boundary conditions, since these two cylinders have been forced not to move. Finally, we establish a test. This, when touching any point, shows the value of the information we are plotting at that point. For example, from here to here, it shows that it is 1.2 times 10 raised to negative 7, and 5.3 times 10 raised to negative 9. Here, there is much more movement, and as we get closer to the maximum point, we see personalized labels in each of these points, regardless of the magnitude that we are plotting. Let's see another type of data that we can plot. First, the stress or the tensions. We choose between several types of tensions produced, also known as effort. These tensions are charges per unit area. The first tension we find is the von Mises tension, also called equivalent tension. The von Mises tension shows the tension resulting from the square root of the difference of the main tensions divided by two. As shown in the equation, this is a good way to represent the entire tensional state in three dimensions, in a single value. Therefore, it is widely used to plot the general tension state of any body. When we choose the von Mises tension, we see that this tension grows and is more stress, preventing movement.
Equally, all the characteristics that we have seen for deformation are equally applicable in the results toolbar, such as changing the scale and the shape of plotting. We can also perform some individual tests to know where both the maximum and minimum were produced. Another way of plotting tensions is by choosing not von Mises tension, but any of the main tensions. Recall by study mechanics of solids that the main tensions is the result of normalizing the tension tensor. That is to say, instead of plotting some tension in court, a coordinate axis is assumed in which the tensions turn out to be only normal. This is also called diagonalize the tensions and then there would be a sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3 perpendicular to each of the faces of the volume differential. These sigmas are the same as we find in these three components. Tension states, sigma 1 is the maximum, sigma 2 is the medium, and sigma 3 is the minimum. Each one is the main tension states, and we can establish that maximum and minimum main state interplot data. For example, if we choose the maximum and solve in this plot, we would be observing the maximum main tension that occurs when diagonalizing internal tensions, but if we want to observe the cuts, we force it to show that data. For that, we add not a normal tension, but a cut tension. The cutting tension show depending on the orientation plane that we have chosen. What is the resulting tangential tension? In this case, we choose any of the coordinate planes, such as x, y, or x, z. And for each of them, it will show different values and maximum and minimum. But if you would like to see what the cutting tension maximum, then we select tension and then maximum cut. This will not show the cuts depending on the coordinate axes, but will now show the maximum cutting tension that occurs in the most unfavorable direction. Other data that we can add beyond the tensions are the unitary deformation data. As we saw in the first case of tensions, there is an equivalent tension called von Mises. While this tension generates a deformation and based on these tensions, you can also reduce the deformations produced by them. Therefore, we find the same amount of unity deformations associated with the tensions that they produce. We would also find, then, the unitary deformation produced by the von Mises tension, by each of the main tensions, or by the maximum court, or any court.